Always at his best, Congressman Jason Chaffetz. He's here this morning. He's going to join us, talk a little bit of politics. Good morning, sir. Hey, Congressman. I wonder what you think about this whole Loretta Lynch business. All of a sudden, we're hearing uh, that the Senate Judiciary Committee is going to be digging deep uh, and figuring out what really happened on that tarmac, first of all, with former President Bill Clinton. But when James Comey came in to testify to the Senate Intel Committee, and you know more than anyone, because uh, you've been in the middle of all of these investigations and trying to get to the truth for the American people. Uh, James Comey didn't just talk about President Trump. He talked about his concerns about how Loretta Lynch handled the Clinton email investigation. Yeah, that's uh, really what uh, evidently sparked a whole, lot of, a whole series of events that uh, Mr. Comey engaged in that he probably wouldn't have done otherwise because he was very concerned about this. I would also point out that the Inspector General, Michael Horowitz, uh, at the Department of Justice has also been diving into that. I would expect that the first part of next year you'll actually see a comprehensive report on that. But to have Senator Grassley and the Senate Judiciary Committee also going after this, it really is a pivotal moment. And if the Democrats are going to be fair and balanced about this, they should be equally concerned about what Loretta Lynch did or didn't do in her role as Attorney General. Yeah, and they should also be concerned about this. A new report coming out this morning that former President Obama knew about this Russian yeah. meddling all the way back in August before the election even happened. So our own Pete Hegseth sat down for an exclusive interview with President Trump. We're going to air it here tomorrow morning. But here's what the president said about that report. Well, I just heard today for the first time that Obama knew about Russia a long time before the election, and he did nothing about it. But nobody wants to talk about that. That the CIA gave him information on Russia a long time before they even, you know, before the election. And I hardly see it. It's an amazing thing to me. You know, in other words, the question is, if he had the information, why didn't he do something about it? He should have done something about it. But you don't read that. It's quite sad. You know, Congressman, if you are commander in chief, you do what's right for the country. You don't play politics every single moment of the day. And in this, in this situation, you would think that the president would stand up and do what was right for all the American people. Well, that's, we've got to remember this whole Russia dust up that the Democrats keep uh, kicking dirt on and trying to create more and more, more smoke out there. This happened during Barack Obama's watch. He was the president of the United States. And as Trey Gowdy was able to get out of Jay Johnson, the Homeland Security Secretary, the Homeland Security uh, Department tried to come in and help the Democrats. And guess what? The Democrats refused their help. And so, as Trey Gowdy pointed out, why is it that the victim of a crime wouldn't even let the law enforcement, in this case Homeland Security, help them? What was evidently going on as a, as a hack? It really doesn't make any sense. Right. And also, why is this the first we're hearing about it and talking about it? You know, we have been talking yeah. about this Russia, Russian investigation for months now. And I think there's a real frustration among the American people that are like, why are we not talking about the issues that impact our lives? There's a new poll out actually that highlights that you have 64% saying that this, the coverage of the investigation is hurting the country. 56% say it is time to move on to other issues. 44% say that we should stay on this Russia stuff. What do you think? I mean, you are on Capitol Hill. You're dealing with this day in and day out. What is your sense? Well, it's the only thing in the Democrats' playbook is to be able to say, hey, let's talk about Russia. But time after time after time, we hear Obama-era officials at the top of the food chain say there is no collusion. There is none. And so were the Russians and others trying to penetrate our systems and dive into our elections? Yeah, I think so. And do we need to make sure that we're mm -hmm. worried about it and can, you know, making sure that in 2018 and 2020 there are no other hacks? And by the way, I would add the census into that who wants to do it, a lot of things uh, online. You know, we got to make sure that those intelligence agencies are fighting back against this and that we're, they're not actually penetrating into our systems. And let's not forget, we are almost approaching the year mark on all of this Russian yeah. stuff, as I like Unreal. to call it. It's just fascinating. Representative Chaffetz, let me jump in here for a moment. You were very vocal in the week following the Steve Scalise shooting about the yeah. threats that you had received individually to your offices. And now in Nebraska, we have an individual, former Democratic official, who comes out and says he wish Steve Scalise had died. We're going to play a soundbite right now, and then we'll get your reaction. His whole job is like to get people, Whoa. convince Republicans to Whoa. kick people off. Okay. We know all of I this. I hate this. I'm glad he got shot. We've laid in our. I'm glad he got shot. I'm not going to say that in public. Well, then what are you saying it to us for? What are you telling us for? I wish he was dead. Just hearing that has gotten me so fired up because that is not America. That is not how we operate 
But as an individual who is on the receiving end of some threats, how do you respond? Well, look, the people I know in Nebraska, they're good, loving, patriotic uh, people. That, that, that person is such an outlier. I'm glad he's, he's being called out. He really needs to have some, I think, psychiatric help. Uh, Steve Scalise is just such a great human being. And these are friends and neighbors. These are the members that serve in Congress and the Senate. They're, we're human beings, too. And so when these threats do come in, we have to take them very seriously. I, I worry that prosecutors aren't prosecuting these cases. Law enforcement is not... Uh, looking at them as deeply as they need to be, but this particular person really needs to be called out and, and uh, shown for what he is, and, and that, that hatred is just so disgusting. Yeah, have, you, have you seen the threats get worse? I mean, you've been in the House for a number of years. Yeah. Have you seen an escalation when it comes to this nasty political rhetoric and these personal threats that you and many others have received? Well, I, I saw it almost snap when, when Donald Trump was actually sworn in as the president of the United States. The, there's something on the far left that really went over the top because the death threats, uh, the number of, of vile personal attacks just skyrocketed. Um, and just because they're coming in great quantity doesn't mean that law enforcement and the prosecutors shouldn't be pursuing these. Uh, they need to be called out for what they are. And there's some sick individuals. Unfortunately, one took action, and we've we got to make sure that these people are are prosecuted so they don't take action in their own communities or against members of Congress. Congressman, talking about extreme rhetoric, we've got this health care debate, which should be about substance, should be about right. policy. Years ago, you had Democrats saying Republicans want to throw granny uh, off the cliff. Now you have you know, Elizabeth Warren saying that the Senate bill is blood money, Hillary Clinton saying uh, that the Republicans are the death party. Again, this extreme rhetoric. My question is, is, is pretty simple. You can get down in the mud uh, and throw some rhetoric back at them, or Republicans can get their sleeves rolled up and get to work after making this promise, as you know, several election cycles in a row that you're going to replace, uh, you're going to repeal and replace Obamacare. So how do you sort of block out that nonsense and actually get the party together? Because it looks pretty split in terms of getting this through the Senate. Yeah, don't you just love it when the Democrats already have their graphics ready yeah. and minutes after <laughs> like the that. bill is introduced, <laughs> yeah. they've already come to conclusions and they're out there holding their press conferences. I mean, it's kind of almost laughable. They hadn't even read the bill. And it's a, a terribly complicated situation. But Republicans did promise we need to repeal and replace Obamacare. It is in absolute disarray. It is failing the American people. And, and, and because it's imploding, we have to find solutions to that. And, and that's what I think we're trying to do. And I know there are different people who have different, mm -hmm. different opinions. On it, but that's how they make the sausage around here in Washington, right. D.C. And, that, and that's the beauty of our system. And somehow, some way, I think we'll actually get there. So you, you say better to take your time and get the right bill than to yeah. rush on something that isn't the best one for the Yeah, re people. remember, the Democrats took a long time. And then all of a sudden, in less than 24 hours, they put out their bill and they passed it. Less than 24 yeah. hours. Here, it has the light of day. We're going into the weekend. we got plenty of time for people to read it and digest it. There are going to be some other opinions. Opinions and maybe some amendments, but that's the way it's supposed to happen. But the bottom line is we have to repeal and replace Obamacare. It's what Republicans promised to do, and we have to do. Well, Congressman Jason Chaffetz in the middle of it all there on Capitol Hill. We appreciate you sharing your insights with us this Thanks morning. Thanks for joining Thank us. You. Good, Good morning. See you. Thank you.